Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, from your favorite niche real estate website, www dot the land geek dot com and today sporting like these Elvis Costello glasses the man the myth the legend living the dream off the beach in Carlsbad California taking time away from the surf and his many entrepreneurial enterprises to podcast with me your favorite almost my favorite Joran Frazier landhub dot com reserve land dot com how are you, my friend? Thank you so much for that introduction, Mark. That was incredible. In fact, you sound like you're out of breath when you got to the end there. And so I was a little bit nervous. I hope you have a cup of water next to you because uh, that was probably one of your best introductions. You know, it's hard to do because I am out of breath being on the walking treadmill all day. And um, But you know what? I, th- I hope you can feel the love. Like there's a lot of love that gets that gets conveyed your way because you are living the dream. I am in 104 degree heat. And, you know, I'm, I've, I think I've, I think I'm over the jealousy. I think I just can really appreciate what you bring into my business, the podcast, and just the world, all your talents. I'm just starting to really fully appreciate Duran Frazier. I, so I hope you're, Dude, I, I really, I really appreciate that. You know, it's funny that last night I actually had a, uh, had a chance to speak in front of a bunch of entrepreneurs at my, at a university uh, that I attended for a short period of time in my life. Yeah. And, and these kids came up, and, and I was introduced as Duran Frazier, graduate of this university. And I looked over at the guy and I said, you know me well enough to know I did not graduate school, sir. <laughs> and all the kids started laughing. And these are all, you know, these are all like you know, entrepreneur students that were probably, I think, I, think, uh, I want to say some graduate students. And it was just really interesting. So I guess for the first 15 minutes, I guess to listen to all these kids come up with different business ideas. And it was funny because there was probably four ideas that have spun in my head for the last like three years. Right. They were like just kind of short snippets of those ideas. And then a couple of other ideas that I knew had already like, you know, like one guy had a mobile mechanic concept that I, I, I already pay attention to TechCrunch and one got funded for like 15 million bucks like four months ago. Wow. So it's just interesting to listen to these kids. And then I got to tell my story. And and do a little Q and A about about an hour last night, and it was just really interesting, you know, li- you know, talking to a bunch of kids that you know you 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 don't realize how young and impressionable a uh, twenty twenty one twenty two year old kid is, right? And 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 they are they're still kids. They don't have responsibilities. They can take big risks. And so I sort of had actually like like a sort of a game plan for them as entrepreneurs. I kind of had my like ten steps for them to kind of follow as entrepreneurs. You know, and one of them was taking risks. I told him, hey, you guys, you can take risks now, but when you're my age, it's a little different. And I said, I know I look like I'm 26, but I'm 37. And uh, so it was really interesting. It was cool to go, go back to a school that, you know, the bittersweet aspect of it was I didn't graduate there. I would have loved to have a degree from the college, but, but to, to be able to talk in front of a class and, and sort of, you know, have many of those students enamored by the fact that you, you know, you had, uh, you know, bought and sold, you know, over 75,000 acres of land is pretty cool. That's so, that's really cool. I yeah, mean, was, yeah, I mean, well, I, there's a quote. I'm trying to find this quote I, I'd read, but basically it was like, you go to college and they'll teach you how to make a living. And you go, you, you know, you do self-learning to make, uh, you know, to make wealth, to grow your wealth, right? Yeah. So, we're, you know, so the people that, you know, go to college – yeah, it, you can learn to make a, a, a good living, right? But, mm-hmm. you know, we're teaching people how to grow into being wealthy. Correct. And Correct. Uh, there's a big, big difference. And with that wealth comes lots of wonderful freedoms. So you, you, you lose your boss. You lose your cubicle. You lose your uh, commute to work. But it also comes with added responsibilities, right? I mean, I got to pay for my own health insurance. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's, there's no safety net. Um, yeah. you know, there's, you know, there's no big company there to, to help you when, when, you know, the market turns. 
So there's there's certainly an opportunity cost involved in what we do, but I think if you if you looked at it, you know, from pros and cons, obviously living at home, in my case, living the dream in San Diego, um, there are a lot of value adds to being able to work for yourself. Yes, having a having a steady paycheck is always nice, uh, but then then you just you know you're but you're making you're, money for someone else. Correct. It's compl- It's sort of complacency at some level, and I'm not telling the people that that are listening to the show that that you're complacent because you have a nine to five job because there's something to be said for stability, right? Oh, people yeah, like, absolutely. People like Mark and myself, we took big risks and they paid off quite well. And look, we, you know, just, just like they paid off, we also had a lot of learning uh, curves. You know, we, we, we definitely had a lot of failures along the way. And I, I, I try to fail at something every day. Yeah. If you're not failing, you're not, you're not trying hard enough. It's like skiing. If you're not falling, you're not skiing hard enough. And I can attest that Mark has failed a lot, guys. And he does. In fact, I think he failed three times before the show started. You know what? It's funny because, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, with marketing, you don't know what's going to work. You've got to try yeah. different things. And, I agree. you know, when you look at the analytics, like, okay, that was a complete bomb. And yeah. you, you, but you, you go on and you learn from it. And I personally, I, I think it's fun. I actually get anxious when I'm not failing. That's true. No, I, I you know, because I, I feel I like, do. oh, I'm not doing enough. Yeah, and I, I learned so much by failing because you, you kind of put a checklist, of, okay, I'm not doing that again. You know, I've, I've learned it once, you know, and, and one of those terms that I actually brought up last night with those kids was, uh, what, you know, fail fast. Fail, yeah, fail exactly. Fast. Fail fast. I think we, did, I think we podcast about that. I remember I'm sure, that. I'm sure, who knows? We've done like 800 of these things, so I'm sure we've done it at least once. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about the incubator. Uh, you know what? Uh, so most of the listeners know I'm. I'm kind of working on something with a group of gentlemen that I'm excited about. One of the things that uh, most listeners, if they've listened to more than one show, know that I am a serial entrepreneur. I love the aspect of the startup, and I love helping people with startups. So uh, I've taken capital over the years. I've invested in several startup companies in San Diego and beyond, and now I'm forming sort of, sort of a syndicate group of uh, guys, and we're going to start our own, which is really neat. So I'm not going to go into too much detail, but uh, I'm excited uh, I've got a couple of uh, meetings ahead that uh, are going to sort of pave the way for something that's going to be sort of unique to San Diego. They've got plenty of these things around the nation and around the world, but we have a very sort of unique strategy, and uh, we've got a couple of guys on our team uh, that are very, very successful. So I'm excited, and uh, it's some, it's sort of been a dream of mine to sort of – Yeah, Adrian, how are you going to find the time to do this? Seriously. It's, Okay, how, I'll tell how you many how. things are you doing? You got the mining project. You've got reserve land. You've got land hub. Why are you taking on one other thing? When do you the, see your kids? There are there. I see them twenty four hours a day. It's all, <laughs> it's all on and be, that's be folks. That's because I get to work out of the house. Um, it's it's all on autopilot. I've got I've got guys selling land for me for reserve land. Right. Land hub Land hub has developers in place, and soon uh, that 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 will launch on its own with with a marketing team in place. Okay. Uh, when I say launch. It's already obviously those that know that that know and that have used the platform. It's already launched. Uh, I bought a previous um, you know platform uh, that was already de- been developed for seven years, and then sort of went and revamped, and then I'm working on the back end component of this of this thing. But there's still a lot of value in listing your land on Land hub. And and the idea is to sort of bring that value add behind behind the platform that you can't see. So and 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 the mining project. I mean, you know, let's be honest, Mark. I mean, I'm sitting here for you know a month and a half waiting for the bank to give us you know the approval on the on on you know the, the round of financing. But at the end of the day, I can I can manage multiple projects. Just like an investor manages multiple projects. Like as long as I'm not the CEO, right? And I'm, you know, and I'm and, and, and in reality, well, if, if, I, if I go to a party and I meet you for the first time. And it's typical in the United States to ask, like, "Hey, what do you do? How do you answer that?" I, I generally say, "Hey, I, I, sorry, I'm unemployed." Um, <laughs> I, it's, I actually every time someone asks me that. In fact, somebody asked me last night. Uh, I actually went to another. Uh, I guess my, my wife calls me kind of a socialite. I love networking. Obviously, still uh, a friend of mine relaunched a really cool company in uh, San Diego. He does. Uh, he does. Uh, sort of branding and, and web design, and, and he launched his uh, his new his new company last night. Uh, the new name of his company. And there's a gentleman there, and he asked me, "What what do you do?" And I I think I told him I worked at McDonald's, and <laughs> obviously he wasn't buying that one. Right. And then I and then and then I said my name, and he goes, 
he goes, oh, like, and it's funny because, you know, we have, I kind of have a big group of, you know, several friends and the guy's like, oh, I, I know, you know, I, I, I've heard your name before and I'm laughing. I'm like, oh gosh, I can only imagine what, what, you know, what, you, what my, what my friends have said about me, like Mr. ADD, you know, entrepreneur, you know, probably giving me a hard time. But so it was just funny because I, I get a lot and it sort of depends on, I usually ask, what do they do first? Right. Because, it, because then I can sort of parlay my conversation to what do you do? Great. You're a commercial banker. Well, I do real estate. Or I, you know, I'm a I'm a real estate developer. Whatever I, whatever conversation, um, you know, unfolds is generally by me asking them first, "What do you do?" So the honest answer, though, is I'm a serial entrepreneur. Correct. 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 And with a special with a specialty in real estate. Correct. I Correct. think that everything sort of evolved. Land Hub, Reserve Land, Corral Canyon, all those are obviously real estate related. But yes, I I think that's my background, um, obviously, but. But in reality, I've got investments in software companies, investments in a surf company, investments in a headphone company. So I have different uh, investments uh, outside of what uh, I work on. But what I think when you have a brain like mine, Mark, it's really interesting because I, I think um, you know I'm 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 special needs. And when I say that, I'm actually serious because when I was younger, and I and I'm learning this now as my son's in school, my son has a lot of problems that I have. Um, he he is literally, and I feel so bad for my wife because she doesn't know how to solve those problems. And I think my mom uh, just let me, you know, run out in the backyard and get crazy in the backyard and swing and jump off things. Sure. But my son now, like, he's in the classroom, and my wife happened to be there this morning, and he, he they were gonna, they're, they give him this whole new, I think, what's it called, core, Common Core um, yeah, platform for kids. Well, yeah, you know, out here the, the education's so bad. I don't, I don't even know if we do that. I think in Arizona it's just common. Like at least you're okay. getting the core in California. God, well, anyway, it, it, the fact of the matter is my son needs to be running for three quarters of the day and then sit down and focus. He is, I think he's top in mathematics in his class. Right. He's, he's reading very well, but the kid can't sit still. And they were going to make him sit in recess and do more work. And my wife's like, you can't do that to my kid. Boy, you're, like, you're a good dear. You're a good parent because you're, you're getting it. Like, yeah. just, just imagine, like, if you, if you didn't get it, that's, this kid would hate school. He'd be miserable. Yeah, and I, I but in re, here's the crazy thing, Mark, and I'm learning about the education system is they don't cater to creativity. No, at all. no, they don't. They don't want to cater to create. And the sad part is, even the non-creative kids could be more creative in a creative environment. If that makes sense, right? Well, you know, I've got two boys, and you know, they come home and they're wild animals. Yeah, and the reason is they had to sit still all day. Like yeah. they're, you know, they, they, you know, the boys they have to have like these wild big movements and if they're not getting enough time at recess they don't get it out yeah and so they come home and you know my wife's like god they're they're, they're going crazy but my daughter she is just fine sitting still doing small little dainty movements you know she doesn't need to like throw things and jump and run in the same way now she is definitely active but it doesn't have that same kinetic energy type feel and it sounds like your son is even you know like you, like you know, it's like the difference between you and me. Yeah, you know, yeah, just, no, he, just, he, just he, things are a little quicker. Yeah, and and I I do don't don't get me wrong, I do envy the little child that sits still. And Mark, I don't know if we talked about this last week, but I think we just brought it up that I sat next to these two little kids that just sat still at dinner. And yeah. I just in my mind, I I came, I came home and my Facebook status was, man, you know, I I envy two two quiet children at dinner, but I can only imagine how boring they are when they get home. Yeah, and, and in reality, I just I. Look, there's a lot of things in, in 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 my children, and especially my oldest, that that's a constant battle, right? I don't wake up in the morning and go, "Hey guys, it's time for breakfast. Sit down. Let's eat your food." My morning, if you and I love to just video it and let people see. My morning is like no other. Like I literally wake up. My son's either in a really good mood or really bad mood, and it's and it's funny because I, I don't think he's not depressed. He's not, you know, he's just he's got this aggressive side of him. But it, he's got these crazy creative ideas, and at six years old, it's baffling. And all I want to do is I want to be able to channel and harness this this little guy. But you can't, right? He doesn't well, quite. You, well, know. you know, what's interesting about that? We'll bring it, you know, full circle to land investing. Is that if you asked me, say, two years ago, three years ago, about general business, I'd say it's really important to focus on one thing, right? Get really good at that one thing. Yeah. But then you know. Someone like you, and I don't know. You have to tell me: Are you an outlier in that? Would you would you still agree with that business philosophy of focus, or would you say no? I throw think a lot, of, throw a lot of different things on the wall, and see what sticks. 
Yeah. I think I think it depends on the type of person you are, actually. Right. right. So so if you are well, what are you, you what are you are, telling these kids? At the what's that? What are you telling what's, these university kids? Like what kind of advice do you give them? Well, it's funny because I had to hold my tongue back, right? Because these kids are in school and I'm telling them, hey, I didn't, I didn't finish school because I started my business. But I don't want to tell these kids, hey, guys, it's a great idea to go take your idea, go raise some capital. There's a bunch of places to help you with your idea because then these kids are thinking, great, I'm a junior in college. I'm wasting, you know, this school I think costs forty to 45000 a year. So it's not cheap. And and uh, so it was interesting just to yeah, to I listen. Hope, I hope they're graduating to be investment bankers because your yeah. your ROI if you're a, an art history major is going to be terrible. It's crazy, and it, and that's what I think is really baffling. And what's so cool about this about this program that they put in place, and and what's neat is I'm also now I've been asked to be on the board of this entrepreneurship program at the school. So and because I want to be a part of a college uh, or a university that 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 has some sort of you know, backing for this creativeness, right? Because I, I, I see such a lack in, in elementary schools, in middle schools and high schools of these kids not having the ability to take creativity to the next level. And going back to, Mark, here's a good point. When you and I started doing business and, and we were buying and selling land, every deal that I generally did was creative, okay? Very every, creative. Every deal, uh, every, I did, every deal you do is out of the box. Correct. Like I would go, hey, let's go get these lots but let's creatively figure out how to get these lots at a cheaper price. Um, and then let me see how I can do a double escrow without Mark knowing, make quick 30 grand, and then Mark can still make, anyway, just kidding. So, You're so not then, kidding, are you? So then, then going back. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I funded, your, I funded your business. You're so welcome. Then going, going, then going back to it, there was a, there was a, there was a moment in time. There was a moment, and, and it was a very interesting moment in my life because I was probably twenty three or twenty four, and I remember I had my first two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the bank. Now, people, my grandpa always says, "Don't talk numbers." And I thought, you know, at twenty four, when you got two hundred fifty grand in the bank, you, you're pretty successful. Okay, yeah, you've, you've that done is, something that, right. Yeah, and and I made it all, and I started from with five hundred dollars in the bank. So um, no, 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 I thought it was eight hundred dollars. No, I told, okay, I told everybody eight hundred. Well, it was actually zero dollars and a piece of land that I put on eBay. Oh, okay. And, I, and then I borrowed five hundred from my mom and five hundred from my sister. So I walked to the auction with eighteen hundred dollars at my first auction. Uh, but going back to it, after auction number seven, I realized that everybody in that room was the, was the same thing. They were doing the same thing. Like, what's there's no there's no differentiate. You know, there's nothing that differentiates me from Mark, right? right. Other than my other than my advertisement, because we're basically selling the same land. Right. So. What I had to do was I had to do something super creative. So the next level was I get to an auction and and I get I get in the back room and this lady goes, you know, because I, 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 I asked the one person I felt like if there was anybody that would kind of do something disruptive in the industry, it was just one woman who kind of came in and she became the Gestapo after you know after seven or eight auctions and she came in and like wanted to raise the price of all these properties. Very intelligent woman, very successful woman, not liked by many, but I didn't have any enemies. I didn't care. If right. you were my competition, I had no problem. So she told me, hey, go to Nevada. Uh, or she goes, you can go to Nevada, but there's no way in heck. Wait, is, this Char is this Charlotte? Yes. Yeah. There's no way in heck I am subdividing land. Now, I just want you guys to know, it, in my mind, I'm thinking, dude, what's stopping us from subdividing land? I'll make a phone call. We'll go, we'll go find out where these, where these guys are. We'll go fly out there. Mark and I, at, at, we were both young. You know, he was I, Yeah, I was young. I mean, you were 30, 31. I was probably 20. What are you, what are you now, Mark? No, no, I was 29. Okay, 29. I was, yeah, whatever it was, 23, 24. We go out there, and within, you know, within a year, we had made several acquisitions up to our 50,000 acre acquisition. And then, of course, I made an additional acquisition after that. Yeah, but you know, you know what? If it weren't for me, you would have gone big right away. And I was conservative. I said, let's do a test of the first section. And you we know made, what? If we, we, a, if we had gone and, and bigger at that time, right that was away, a $32,000 Listen, to this, listen to this. Had we gone bigger right away, we would have made more money. No. Think, no, we wouldn't have. Yes, we, we made did. so much money on that deal, Duran. I know we did. Yeah. Well, how would we have made more money? No, had we bought more property early on. That's No, all. but we, we know we tested that property first. We tested the subdivision process first. And then True. we went big. Because we we're like, oh, yeah, this works. And we went real big. True. Now, now more. So I think now, you would have gone big from the beginning. And probably. And that probably it probably wouldn't hurt me that bad, but but going back to it, thing. what's interesting, what's interesting though is is is, and all I'm trying to say is that when we went and did this deal, Mark probably would have been like, you know, Char, you're probably right because Mark's a different person than I am. 
Mark, and I'm not saying he would have, because Mark was obviously an outside the box thinker as well. But but I think Mark may have been, yeah, I'm not really going to go look to subdivide. I, you know what it is? I was smart enough to be open to the creative ideas. Yeah. Even though it wasn't my idea. And you, and Mark knew who to surround himself that had the creativity. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So, so while everybody else was kind of, you know, whispering under their breath, hey, Duran's a crackpot, I was like, yeah. he's, he's a genius. Yeah, and, and I, look, I mean, to this day, people, I, I love it. I love when people say bad things about me, Mark. No, they were, I'm joking. Of course they weren't saying bad things. No, but, 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 you know, but, what they were probably thinking is like, you know, like Char was probably thinking, oh, subdividing's not, that's, you know, that's yeah. a waste of time. Yeah, and she never, she never, ever, ever did it, Mark. Not one, I don't think she did one property yet she did sell i mean she's been very successful she sold thousands of acres in nevada but she was not interested in any in any doing any subdivision work so you know going back to but I, what i was saying is i love when people like there are people today that go gosh he talks too fast or gosh he's you know what is that guy what's his deal and i'm the first guy to admit i got some screws loose that's what makes me me right right and that's what that, that's what allows me to be creative and and allows me to sort of do what I do, you know, sh should I be more focused? Yeah, there are times where I go, yeah, and, and I am doing, I am actually, funny enough, I'm I, the last, and I've talked about it in, in the last few podcasts, I've been very good lately at just really taking time to focus on one thing for five or six or seven hours, and then going, you know, that's that's my project, and then working on something the next day, or maybe a couple of things in a day, so, and I've, and I've kind of cut off my meetings to, to sort of cut, give me more time to focus, Right. And, uh, and so I've been I've been doing really good and and, uh, and and also surrounding with myself with people that can sort of help my ideas grow. Well, that's, well, that's the thing. And I, I think that's the key to any business is you've got to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, I've got Brian, who's a genius. And this guy is, uh, you know, a partner and the copywriter and the marketing, you know, guru. He's a genius. Yeah. Um, and without him, like, it's... I would be just, you know, treading water. And yep. then, you know, in the whole rest of my team, it's taken a long time to build and you go yep. through a lot of people, but that's, that's the only way to grow. You've got to surround yourself with really good people who buy into what you're doing. They can't just, it can't just be paycheck players, yep. right? They do, they, because that they're, they're on to the next thing. They'll, they'll go, you know, their heart's not in it. And it, and it shows in their work. There's, there's no, no I, there's no emotional labor in it. There's no love in the work. I, I totally agree. Um, I, and I, I want to just quickly go over a couple of the points that I brought up last night. I've got this little sheet in front of me um, because it kind of pertains to our conversation today. Are you, you um, know what, Are we going to talk about this stuff at the uh, the Land Geek convention? We can, and I can, and I've got more more points. Um, but but here, a couple of them, and we've all got a lot of these points. You and I have talked about in the past. Um, and even though it's it's more entrepreneurial based, it's, it it fits right in with the land business because you are an entrepreneur if you're gonna if you're gonna learn how to buy and sell land. Yeah, absolutely. So, it, it's it's a business. I mean, just it's more our model is more like a franchise. Yeah. Because we give you the model. And yeah. It's it's kind of I mean it's as plug and play as you can possibly get in an entrepreneurial real estate venture. Yeah. But at and, the end of the day, I mean, there is no push button system. You still have to work it. Yeah, and that's and that's one thing that people need to learn. I mean, or people need to realize is that you don't just walk into this going, "Hey, gosh, you know, like I'm all of a sudden it's just going to one day snap and everything's going to happen. It's going to fall on my lap." No, you got to go out there and work for it. Yeah, Not, I mean, this is a hustling business. Yeah, and every and you know, but today, every, like, everything's a hustling business. Yeah. So the, one of the first things I, I said last night, to the group was learn. The number one thing was learn new things. Like, don't be afraid to learn something new. Challenge yourself by learning what you don't want to learn. Right. I don't know anything about, uh, you know, building websites. Then go on YouTube and learn about it. I it's disagree. I think you know what? Don't even waste your time. I disagree. I, I, just, I completely disagree. I don't think you should be doing it yourself. Go no, on Fiverr. I'm just saying, go on Fiverr and on. pay somebody five bucks to build you a website. No, no, no. Listen to me. I'm not saying to go so that you can be a future web developer. I'm saying that so that when you do things in the future, you know how it's done. You know that if I need to tweak something or do something different, it's good to have all these sort of in your in your mental repertoire when you go into creating, uh, you know, whether it's a new marketing model for your land business or whatever it is, it's good. You disagree with learning new things? No, not at all. I, yeah, disagree, in, I disagree in learning new things that don't make you any money. Okay, building, just, building a I, website doesn't make anybody any money. 
If I'm going to learn but new things. How can you say that though? That's silly. Because I can hire someone to do that for $5 now. I don't okay. need to spend my time doing it. Okay, if I'm so going to learn how to so, do something, I want to learn how to do money making activities. Just so everyone knows that Mark, just so you guys know, Mark's $5 websites, they look like they're actually $4. Okay. I want to do that, websites. That is not true. That is 100% true. They look true. like $6 I, websites. In, in 30, in 20 minutes, in 20 minutes, I can put together an unbelievably beautiful website. Now, Mark's, yeah, big Mark, deal. Beautiful Mark, doesn't make you any money. Sure, People sure buy sure my land. They it's don't okay. care how it looks. They Brandon buy my Mark, land. Marketing, branding. It's, yeah, it, you know what? My, you know what my marketing is? Here's a great value, and they buy. Wow. That's marketing. They I don't care disagree. How it looks. I disagree. Really? So, I, I completely disagree with you. I agree that I agree that price is important, but also I believe that 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 the way you're the way you present yourself oh, is, is is very I, really in the land business? Dude, uh, come on, Mark, in any business. No, land business is not Credi I believe that credibility is a credibility is different. I'll give no, you credibility, but I, I don't think you need to spend a thousand dollars on a website today. Go, go to a janky land website and tell me right now. Those guys are probably selling a lot of land. Grand, you come know on. What I'm you, talking I'll, about. You, you know, know the guy, you know the guy right I'm talking now? about? The guy Listen makes a million Listen. dollars a year and he doesn't know HTML and his ads look terrible. Who's this? Who's this? Dave. Okay, I've got another guy for you. Oh, hold on. A you million, say, you know, hold a million on. Stop a year. Stop right there, Mark. Stop right there. He's been doing it forever and people love him because it sells cheap land. And his margins are 7%, folks. I don't care. Okay, so he's making seventy grand off doing a million. He's not. And he's not he's that making successful. more than that. He, Mark, he's, he's making seven percent margins. Grand, come on, stop it. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. He wouldn't be able to make a living. Sure, he would seventy grand. He lives in. He lives in the middle of Arizona. Whatever. <laughs> I, I. What you know? We're just going to disagree because okay. I, I, there's enough. There's enough evidence out there that ugly websites. You can have a a, a thriving multi million dollar company with an ugly website as long as what you're selling. Is compelling to your customer, but what if your customer doesn't want to get there? What if there's no the user experience? That's, the, no, no, the user, that's that's different. No, it's not. Is different. It, Marketing it, it, well, is different. A nice and pretty website, and it functions correctly. Great. If you try to tell me that a dr ugly, janky website is just just fine because the price is, dude. You, Mark, I got it. I got to get this in your head, bud. It's really important for you to sort of have that business card that's. Got a user interface that the, that the person looking for Nevada land or California land. I'm can disagree find it. with you. You know what's more can important? Find it. Making over a hundred offers a day and that's, buying land pennies on the dollar. Because if I, if I buy, if I buy something of value, now. if I buy yes. something of value, twenty cents on the dollar, I don't even need to have a website. I can call a hundred people today and say, "This is the comp on this land. You're going to make, the, you know, three hundred percent. Do you want it or not? No website." So what, what Mark just did is a political tactic. What he's done is he shifted <laughs> the conversation into something completely different. We're talking, Wes, all of a sudden he's talking about letter writing campaigns. I didn't say anything. That's very, folks, I'm not denying that letter writing but campaigns. But you're saying go out important. there and learn what how I, to make a website I, from the very beginning. And I'm saying don't waste your time with it. Make offers. That's my argument. And you'll agree. You agree. I don't agree. You do agree because buying Mark assets shifted. makes you money. Buying Mark asset pennies on the dollar makes you money. Pretty websites don't. Do you disagree with that statement? I believe that pretty websites and well priced land make make. Oh, and and well priced problem. and well priced land. But if you have if you have well priced land, correct, you can still that make can't, money. That can't be found. A, a janky website. website that Mark puts up for five dollars. Yes, I would much prefer to spend thirty minutes of my time or twenty minutes putting together my a WordPress website and a theme that I purchased online that takes me seconds. It looks awesome. I plug the – the land still has to be plugged in regardless if you have a janky website or you have a, a beautiful website. The land still has to be plugged in, so you have to put the content on there, right? So if I'm going to have a nice why, website – I, I could put it on LandHub with my pretty pictures and a little right? copy and sell it. I don't, right. I don't even if, need a website. I can go to LandHub. What if you're building a list? Well, if I'm building a list, I can use a pop-up form. Folks, do you say, see how Mark? Do you see how Mark? Uh, he he gets a little nervous, and when he does, and I see it right now on the I'm camera. Not, I'm not nervous at all. We need to start doing this on Google Hangouts because right now you need. You know what Mark, it is? How you know how you build your list? A five dollar landing page, baby. On I'm sitting in a tank top, and Mike's got a Mark's got a polo shirt on, and he is he's got his arms up behind his head. He's sweating Whatever. so bad because I just caught him like three times. You didn't catch me with anything. <laughs> you know I'm right, but we, you know what? I'll give you I'll give you a little bit of credit. Because you're right. I mean, it, I think it's ancillary, and it's not something I think anybody should spend any serious time on. But look. The keyword is serious. Yeah, serious. I, I, but look, you know, 
it is it is um, a, a function of business today to have a website, and obviously you're going to need something that that you know promotes you. All right, let's let's stop arguing. What's yes. your what's your tip of the week? Oh, you just put me on the spot like that. I've got a great one. Mark is going to actually write this down right now, folks. I'm going I to I would suggest now. you write this down as well. All right. The website is wpauctions.com. wpauctions.com. Okay. Don't this is, if these this are WordPress is auctions? This is a WordPress auction oh, plugin no. for your website. So basically, you can run an auction on your own. You build your list. You send your list the, the link to an auction, and you make it an hour auction. And you put a piece of land on there. And you say, hey, folks, there's one hour high bidder gets this land. I think that's – it's, and they just revamped uh, – in fact, I think today or yesterday came out with their, their new version. So uh, just something that I think would be helpful for people um, that, are, that, try, that are building lists and, uh, and have good property. I think – you know what? I love this. We'll, we'll talk about a more advanced method of doing this yeah. um, when we've got more time. But I, I love that. I, that's a great tip. Thank you. But I don't think it's for newbies, and we'll get into why. And, and I'm just – we don't talk about it now, but it's not, it's not a newbie strategy. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually agree with you there, but I think we have newbies and we have, uh, we have uh, the advanced listeners listening as well. So No, no. For the advanced listeners, this is a great tip. Yeah. And, so, and it, even, even the, the mid-tier guys, the guys that have been, that been doing this for six months in the program for six months. And mid-tier have, guys, I'd say this is great. Yeah. yeah. So. But you know, right when you get on – I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't get this plug-in right away. I, I agree. But this is great. All right. My tip of the week is bombbomb.com. Check out bombbomb.com. I, I, had a, I had a meeting with these guys yesterday, and I'm like, there's there's no value to this service. And then all of a sudden, the guy walked me through it. It saved me so much time with my coffee talk videos and customer videos. I bought it right on the spot. And I absolutely love it. So awesome. check out bombbomb.com, a way to connect with your customer with video email. And awesome. you think, oh, I can just go and, you know, it's really easy now to upload videos. This is a huge time saver because you can upload a video on bombbomb.com within three seconds. It makes it, they make it that easy. And then That's they awesome. got the tracking and everything. So. Dran, are we good? I'm sorry to argue with you. So yeah, so no, it's okay. You know, you, you obviously have a lot of frustration going on in your life. And I just want to i want to try and make it better. That's all. Pre- all right. Well, listen, I want to remind everybody that the Lean Geek Boot Camp is coming up November 7th and 8th. Duran and I will be there. We're going to have a full hour of just arguing about – I don't even know what we're going to argue about. But we'll, we'll probably find, just, We'll find something for sure. Yeah. It'll just be called you know, Mark and Duran debate about something at this time slot. And uh, so you know, contact the office now. Email us at uh, support at thelandgeek.com. And start booking now. Or November. sign up at landconvention.com. Oh, yeah. Or go to land, www.landconvention.com if you don't have the Investor's Toolkit and uh, you don't have the two free tickets. Uh, you can buy your tickets there. And look, give Duran okay. some love. Mark, some love. Should, we, should we do a little, uh, a little plug on the VIP? Mark and I are going to do a little VIP dinner um, one, of, one of the nights. Have we figured out what night we're going to do that? Uh, we could do it Friday night. Um, I think Thursday either Friday Thursday, Thursday night or Friday night, yeah. And we're going to have a VIP dinner. So you, if you guys want to hear Mark and Duran banter at dinner, um, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a little extra money. But, uh, but yeah, come. It, the dinner will be free, um, and you guys can spend some time with us and listen to us um, talk about land and everything else we got yeah, going on. Get, get a little you know, one-on-one with us um, and break bread. I think that will be really fun. Anyways, uh, give Duran some love. Go to landhub.com. Check out his uh, – Wholesale land at reserveland.com. If Duran doesn't have anything you want, go to my site, frontierpropertiesusa.com. And always go to www.thelandgeek.com. Download the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Feet of Land Buying Mistakes. And of course, get this always informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. Duran, hey, thanks again. I know you got to go surf, but. Uh, Thank you. Yes, I have to go, sir. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Thanks for telling all the listeners that I don't work. Yeah. Well, look, you're, <laughs> you're good with your time. I wish I were doing it. And uh, we'll see everybody next week. Thanks, everybody. See you next week, guys. Bye. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.